All right, welcome to part six of my video series looking at Russ Miller's 50 Facts versus Darwinism in the Textbooks. I think I got it right again. That's two in a row. And I guess I'll get started. So why do they teach this? Well, this former Harvard professor and Nobel Prize winner explains it pretty well. He says, I do not want to believe in God. Now, that's his choice. I feel bad for him, but it is his choice. He says, therefore, I chose to believe in that which I know is scientifically impossible. Spontaneous generation arising to evolution. Any knowledgeable scientist that deals in these fields realizes that Darwinism does not stand a chance of having taken place. It's impossible from many standpoints. They teach it because they don't want to believe in God. Here he is, the biggest douche of the universe. In all the galaxies, there's no bigger douche than... Sorry, sorry, I'm listening to music, not paying attention to what I'm doing here. Um, anyway, so, tell me about... Tell me, Russ, I, I'm curious. Uh, did you see that quote yourself? Did you actually look up the original source where that quote came from? You don't give a source, uh, but I've seen that, that quote in a lot of creationist things. I believe even Hovind used that quote. Um, and they cite it as... Uh, as George Wald, Scientific American, 1958, um, with some page numbers and such. Um, but anyway, I'm curious if you actually looked it up yourself or did you just cut and paste from what other creationists have said? I'm, I'm curious about that because some of us have access to the original. And you know what, Russ? That quote's not in there. That, that quote that you gave on that slide... Um, isn't in that entire article by George Wald, okay? The article is about creation, spontaneous generation, evolution, and a belief in God. All of those elements are in the article. Never is that quote in that article. Because, you know, you, the reality is, by using that quote, you using that quote, in my opinion, justifies any name that I want to call you. Because that's fucking low okay that is low you're that i mean can you picture picture in your mind um somebody quoting you with something that you never said never believed never intended and going around and saying and russ miller says whatever it would be really really crappy it would even be more crappy if it happened after you were dead and couldn't defend yourself anymore wouldn't it right It'd just be somebody smearing your good name uh, for their own selfish purposes, right? You, you can see how that, that might might look to somebody. Um, that's really low. Because uh, you know what that article's about? That article is about, he talks about spontaneous generation in the scientific sense, and in the sense of abiogenesis. Uh, he talks about people's beliefs in creation, um, young earth, old earth, and such. And he talks about, the focus of the article is on how many of his colleagues are able to blend the two. How many of his colleagues are able to maintain a strong faith in Christianity while still being scientists, still applying naturalistic methods to their research and never having it compromise their faith. And how much, even though he himself doesn't hold that position, how he's almost envious of those scientists that can. How much respect he has for scientists that are able to be good Christians and good scientists at the same time. You see, now do you, do you kind of see why it's a really, really shitty thing, a really shitty article for you, or actually, I know you didn't do it. I know you, you are lying about it. Um, you're, you're, you're taking it from somebody else. You're not looking it up yourself. Um, but, but, you know, when you when you when you put up a slide like that, you you're basically you're you're sort of taking the blame for um, for this kind of thing. Um, if you don't go actually look up the source yourself and see if it's actually accurate before you report it, you're bringing on any any criticism uh, on you. It, essentially, that's kind of the uh, double-edged sword of plagiarism. But I think Christians need to stand up and stop this false teaching because we are losing about 81% of our children today. By the time they turn 20, four out of five Christian kids are leaving the faith. Well, I should say they're leaving the church. And the reason for this... Hey, Rustical, uh, just 
here, here's a little. Uh, uh, four out of five Christians lose their faith when they go to school or go to college. Um, uh, that's an interesting fact. I don't know if it's true. I don't. I don't know if that number is accurate. You know, you, you don't have a good track record with accuracy. Okay, but nonetheless, if true, four out of five Christians lose their faith when they go to college. Here's a possibility. Here's something. I mean, I, I know you attribute it to you know the evil, sinful lies and deceptive nature of evolution. Um, but is it possible? Is is there the, is the remotest, thinnest? Open your mind up a little crevice. And think, is it possible that just maybe that when when these Christian kids go away to college, um, when they leave the, their their churches, their their private schools, or their home school, or whatever they may uh, be going into, and they find out that the things like the Paluxy Man tracks are frauds that are made up, that Noah's Ark's never been found on Mount Ararat, when they find out that the supposed no evidence for evolution actually is thousands and millions and millions of pieces of evidence of evolution and such. And they think, you know what? That motherfucker lied to me. Those fuckers have been lying to me all along. Just me. Well, if they lied to me about the origin of the world, is it possible they're or lying to me about the rest of it? Maybe the rest of it's full of shit, too. Just think about it. Is that possible? And they're going to make kids think that billions of years ago... It just happened. Let me ask you a question. Who saw a cell form all on its own 3.8 billion years ago? Nobody. That's a religious belief. I don't even think it's a belief. I doubt they even believe that. Luis Garavito of Colombia, also known as La Bestia, convicted of the rape and murder of 138 children, suspected in over 300. No living witnesses to any of his crimes. Harold Shipman of the UK, also known as Dr. Death, 218 known murders, suspected of over 250. No living witnesses to any of his crimes. Gary Ridgway of the United States, also known as the Green River Killer, convicted of 49 murders, thought to be at least 90. No living witnesses to any of his crimes. Anatoly Anapienko of the former USSR, also called the Beast of the Ukraine, convicted of 52 murders, no living witnesses to any of his crimes. Russ, if eyewitness accounts are all that matter, then do you suggest that the convictions of these and the hundreds of similar monsters in our society was based on nothing but religious faith? Should evidence based on indirect observation be discarded? Yes, I know the last bit I did was filled with fallacies. I, I didn't really intend it to be taken seriously. I know for a fact that Russ Miller doesn't support the release of serial killers based on the lack of actual eyewitness testimony. Um, the point I was trying to make with hyperbole there uh, was that the standard of what qualifies as evidence um, in many cases is somewhat hypocritical. All right. So in order to believe that all life originated from a single cell, we are required to have actually visually witnessed that first cell coming into existence. Um, no, no other evidence for it, no, no other molecular evidence, no other experimental data um, counts as good enough evidence in that case. While in the case of a murder trial, obviously, I believe Miller would be willing to accept a wide variety of other non-direct observation. But I think what you'll find is that science will stand up perfectly for what the Bible says. Really, Russ? Does science support the Bible? Um, because I would think that if the if science supported the Bible, you would be presenting that scientific evidence. You would be presenting the positive evidence for creation instead of spending all of your time trying to find holes in the theory of common descent, in the theory of evolution, in in flaws in the evidence that science presents for uh, Darwin's theory. Um, you spend all your time doing that and not one bit of your time actually showing positive evidence that the earth is 6,000 years old, that man was created by a ball of dust that God cre breathed life into. You're not showing any evidence for that. Um, so I kind of think that if you had it, you'd be shouting it from the mountaintops. In fact, this uh, physics professor had stated, evolution became a scientific religion. 
And almost all scientists have accepted it, and many are prepared to bend their observations to fit with it. Well, bending the observations means lying, and lying undermines real scientific study. Lying undermines real scientific study. For once, Russ, you're actually talking about a subject that I would say you're an expert in, okay? About that Lipson quote, I, I, I'm a little suspicious. Now, I can't find that, if that's from the Physics Bulletin, I can't find the actual original journal. Um, it's not in any of the archives that I have access to through the university. So, um, I, I'm not saying that doesn't exist. I'm not saying he didn't say that. I, I'm a little suspicious, though, that when I type in those keywords, I get well over 5,000 hits on, on that quote in quotes. Uh, uh, from Google, every single one of which is from a creationist website. Um, I would think, my guess would be that if an actual, real expert, um, Lipson is is actually, you know, he's a, he's a degreed um, physicist who studies optics. Um, but if somebody of that level actually said something, as your quote implies, that it would be repeated by others and secular sources would be repeating it, at the very least, in order to dispute it if they disagreed with this statement. The fact that nobody else except for creationists have that makes me just a little bit suspicious. And I know for a fact that you've never seen the original. I'm, I'm going to guess that you're, again, cutting and pasting from another source. But the important point is, is that even if he said that, even if that quote is 100% accurate, not a quote mine, not distorted, is what he said, what he meant, one across the board. It's absolutely meaningless, okay? Uh, I can find somebody that said just about anything I want somebody to say. It doesn't mean it. I can find Christians that say any number of wild claims about their theology. I can't take that quote and say, see, this is what Russ Miller believes, right? You, do, you see the, do you see the point of that? You see, the problem we have today is that scientists are forced to toe the evolutionary line. If they do not do so, if they come out and say they don't believe in Darwinism, or they believe, especially if they say they believe in biblical creation, they won't get hired, they won't be promoted, they won't get money to do research, they won't have their papers published. In other words, their career will be through. So it's not based on science, it's based on religious bias. Sorry, Russ, but I got to call bullshit on that. I would like to see some actual evidence. Um, I know where you're getting your, your supposed evidence from is that expelled bullshit. Uh, this idea that any scientist throughout, that we're purging our academic halls of anybody who doubts Darwinism um, as if it's some kind of a holy religion. Um, that's a load of crap. I, I, I don't know that you, I, I don't know if you know this or not. Um, I think it's funny that you can say that. And then earlier on in the same talk, you quoted Scott Minich. You know who Scott Minich is? University of Idaho, tenure-track professor, evangelical Christian, Darwin doubter, who continues to publish in peer-reviewed scientific journals. Um, what happened? What, why is he exempt from this rule? Why are we letting him speak out um, while we're, you know, everybody else is being purged? Explain that, Russ. There's cosmic evolution, like the Big Bang, the origin of space, matter, and time. There's organic evolution, the start of life. And there's macro or Darwinian evolution, which is the origin of new kinds. And this requires major additions of new and beneficial genetic information to the existing gene pools to change one kind into another kind. Now, these first three definitions are all religious in nature. You can't scientifically show any of these having taken place. But the fourth definition, microevolution, is a scientific fact. By no evidence, of course, you mean no evidence that you'll accept, um, which is, were you there? That is the evidence that you're talking about. I think it's funny that you call this macroevolution Darwinism. Uh, that's pretty interesting because I would say Darwinism would be what Darwin said and what Darwin said in Origin of Species is 90 plus percent what you would call microevolution uh, and practically no macroevolution. 